Patsy Rodenberg is Britain's foremost voice coach and head of the voice department at the Royal National Theatre. Now, um, everybody's going to worry that they haven't got a very good voice. Are there people with really bad voices? There's nothing you can do for them? Well, I don't believe in a thing called the bad voice. Most people in the room, I should think, feel that they've got a bad voice or they're, they're worried about their voice. But if you think about it, every human voice is amazing. If you think about a baby crying, you know, they've got a tiny little set of vocal cords and they, they cry and they go on and on. The voice never tires. They have this amazing range. And then we lose it as we sort of... Um, get battered by life, we lose it. But most people's voices are wonderful. I haven't come across a bad voice. Well, you may today, it's possible. We don't well, know. Well, we can change it, we can change it. That's the, that's the thing. So, is there something that we can do to kind of get ourselves going and get ourselves started? Well, on I this? think we can start physically. I mean, the thing to remember is that the voice is a physical thing that is connected to all sorts of parts of our bodies. I mean, I, I was watching some of the people walking across the stage and, and, and doing that. I mean, obviously, if you tighten your shoulders... I mean, everybody, if they just tighten their shoulders now... Go on, tighten your shoulders, see what happens. Now, that, that sort of seems exaggerated, but a lot of us live like that most of the time. Does that feel familiar? It does, doesn't mm. it? Right? OK, let the shoulders go. That's the first thing you can do to start controlling your voice and your breath. You can start releasing the shoulders. Just go on, have a go. They might creak a bit, that's just tension, you know? That, that's fine, that will, that will go. What about the neck now? How many of you feel that you tighten your neck? Now, that sounds odd, but I'm looking around a lot of you. How many of you tuck your heads in? <laughs> now, now I'm talking about it. Can you feel how tense the throat has suddenly become? Yeah. Yes, yeah? I can, yes. These are habits that cut us off our natural voice. My belief is that all your voices are magnificent. The natural voice, the baby's cry, is magnificent. And then we gather habits around us that actually stop us having a choice to use our voice. We, we, we forget to do physical exercises. You know, we, we work out our bodies, but very few of us think that the voice should be worked out. Talking. Ah. And again. Ah. Now look up to that point again and just send three. Ready? One, two, three. Now let's just say a couple of quite emotional words out there because you're now getting something quite easy. You know, counting one, two, three, it's easy. But look at this. What if we say a word like no out there? No. As opposed to what most of us do when we say no, which is what? Now, it becomes dangerous, doesn't it? This is when speaking becomes wonderfully dangerous because as you get the voice out and the words go, and that, that makes a great communicator, you start to become vulnerable, don't you? But, in fact, we've got to break that barrier because it's easy, isn't it? It's easy to say to anybody, I love you. <laughs> doesn't mean... But if you actually say, I love you, you've done it, you know? Okay. I think anybody can change the tone of their voice. I've had people in my practice in Beverly Hills, California, who've had very high-pitched voices, and then all of a sudden they lower their voices. People who've had very little vocal confidence now are more confident. They know how to get their points across. They know how to project their voice. I've had people change their accents and dialects. Suddenly, when I was 25, I did this interview with Tatler, and this very nice woman who's since become a friend called Eve McSweeney wrote that I had the sexiest voice in the, in the world or something. And ever since then, it's it's just reoccurred in every article that's appeared. I don't actually think I have. I don't think, I, you know, I'm sure someone would have noticed it before the age of 25 if it were so. I don't think it's a boring voice. I don't think it's a particularly um, odd voice. It, it's, it's just a normal, natural voice. I think that's the need to convey things naturally. We'll start with Fiona. All right, Fiona, come on up here. Come on up, Fiona. Come and play. It's not going to be terrible. <laughs> Ish. It, it might be a bit narrow. <laughs> um, Fiona. If you just count over three... No. Yes. One, two, three. That's, that's a sort of very... Do you hear that sort of very soft quality? Now, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, this is a very good quality to use when you're stopped by the police in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of getting out and saying, yes, officer, it's quite good to get out and say, yes, officer, because it's useful. It's a useful quality. But it might mean that you feel that your voice isn't as powerful. Just let your head drop. Just let your head drop. And let the, just feel the weight of that head. Enormously heavy, the human head. And it has to be carried on the top of the spine. So now just let the weight of the head take the body over. Very simple thing. Don't worry about your hair. And just see if you can flop over, right over. This is a basic centering exercise that um, any professional speaker uses. It's just a way of releasing tension. And just sigh out. Ha! Ah, ha! Ah. It's a huge voice. And again. Ah. Can you hear the difference as she gets there, the breath? Because even standing next to you, it was quite, to be honest, you have to concentrate to hear what you're saying. Um, but actually, you've got quite a big sound. It's a huge voice. 
One, two, three. Now just you, Fiona, and. One, two, three. Now speak over three. Remember that feeling. One, two, three. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Can you feel that bigger? Yeah. Does it yeah. feel better? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Talking. Very interesting fact that when you get somebody doing a physical exercise, they stop breathing. I mean, this sounds very mad, but can you just count over ten on the edge of a yawn? One, one, one two, two, three, three four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, ten. ten. One, two, three. Ma, ma, ma. Ma, ma, ma. Now just speak over three with that ease. One, two, three. But I just want you to feel that tension there. OK. Now you start to breathe with that tension. You start to feel a bit more... I mean, if you will... I'm not, you're not going to let me pull you over, are you? I can't. No. <laughs> I'm not no. going to pull... I'm not, I'm not going to do that. OK. Put the chair above your head. Let your shoulders go. You're not going to throw it at me, <laughs> but... As though you were going to throw, you know, so that you really mean business. Now just count over three. One, two, three. And again. One, two, three. I think that one of the most insidious uh, parts of the British class system is accent. It's almost unique as a class system in that regard. I mean, if you uh, come from an aristic aristocratic big landowning family in Alabama or Mississippi, you speak with a southern American accent. If you come from a big landowning family in Scotland or the north of England, you speak with a southern English public school accent. I do remember once hearing my voice on some kind of recording years ago. It might have been a telephone. And I thought there was a touch of Cockney which was rather interesting because I was born within sound of Bow Bells, which means that technically I am a Cockney. Uh, we're going to be looking at accent now, whether we think it makes a difference to how we think about people, whether it makes a difference to how... Obviously, it makes a difference to how they speak, and the man who knows all about it is Alistair McGowan. Would you please welcome him, the man of a thousand voices? <laughs> Nine hundred and ninety-eight. Oh, is it? I'm so sorry. I gave you a rather big build the on there. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's, uh, there's 55 million people in this country, and there's a surprising number of different accents, isn't there? What's your mm. uh, home accent? I was brought up in Worcestershire, so uh, I don't have the accent from Worcestershire particularly strongly, but uh, it, it, it's uh, it's very strong like that, really. And it's it's a sort of, it's the nearest thing you get to the archers. What they do on the archers. That's about as near as you get to, to Worcestershire. That's the sort of thing that goes down there. And if you want to mark it, yes, my it's, job. Uh, uh, anybody knows where Worcestershire is, they'll be doing well. I'll tell you, because no one ever knows where it is. It's about, um, I don't know where it is either, you see. So, uh, about there? About, about there. What's the most unusual accent, do you think? Um, I think sometimes the hybrid accents are quite unusual. Like, I'd say, for example, like Nottingham is a bit of a hybrid because um, in Nottingham, it's sort of halfway between Yorkshire and the West Midlands, so you tend to get sound, sounds from both areas, you see, so you get sort of um, a bit of a West Midlands sound as well, but you also get the, uh, the sound of, of, of Yorkshire as well, so that's a sort of a hybrid type thing that you get there. So. Which, uh, Nottingham, as you know, obviously, is about... Hey, sir, I've been to Nottingham many, many times. There. Let's go through some classic accents. Can you, can you try one that you think everybody will recognise? Uh, all right. Uh, if I was to start talking like that, I suppose people might recognise that one. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, yeah. uh, we'd be far north, actually. <laughs> 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 Halfway between Worcester and Nottingham, I'd say. That's about oh, look, I won. <laughs> 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 Hello. 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 Well, uh, you know, there's that one, of course, which we know quite well, which every footballer in the country seems to talk like that for some strange reason. All the best ones, anyway, I surely agree with that. All the best footballers talk like that because they come from... Uh, Newcastle. 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 Higher, lower. Higher. Higher. <laughs> I feel like Anne Aston here. Yeah. <laughs> right. We've lost Worcestershire, there. Yes, We've lost Worcestershire. Worcestershire's gone. It's gone. Uh, yeah. so it's, uh, not in them, I think. But, I mean, around here, obviously, you've got to get all the, uh, all the London accents and around the south coast and that, you know, you've got those accents which are sort of variations on, really, aren't they? And again, they're hybrids down here. You've got hybrids sort of cross between the London and sort of, you know, Hampshire, Dorset and all that. It's, it's, it's interesting what, if you look at the way that uh, standard English has changed over the years from the very, very affected far back 
times of the 1930s when everyone was terribly, terribly precise. And then it got slightly more relaxed during the 60s, uh, but it was still quite tight. And now it's just got very much like, you know, that's the way to talk, is you could be very loose and very lazy. And uh, people like Mark Lamar are quite interesting, because Mark's actually from Swindon. But uh, if you've probably seen him on the Big Breakfast, and you know, he talk, he's talking like, you know, you think he was from South London or something, the way he talks something like South London. And John from Watts, obviously, is uh, another example of that, you know, and uh, a man who comes from... Uh, South London himself, I think, John, Jonathan, and uh, you know, it's all very much like that. And if you ignore the, uh, the, you know, the mispronounced R sound and everything, it's, it's very, again, it's quite, it's quite a lazy sort of, you know, not pronounced and everything, and very, very laid back. And uh... but there are sort of celebrities whose voices you don't like. Um, Terry Christian, I, anybody like Terry Christian's voice? <laughs> no, but uh, I don't. You know, sometimes that is, you've got to ask yourself, is that because of where he comes from and the fact that he talks, you know, like a Mancunian and people there? Oh, I don't like that. Or is it because of who he is? I think having a strong Mancunian accent, uh, it helps people remember you, but it can hinder you, you know, getting over the first hurdle, because sometimes people just listen to the first few words you say and then they just cut off, you know, they just think, oh, he's thick, and the stereotypes come out. <laughs>